Okay, the meeting is underway and the floor is yours. All right, thank you, Rai. Thank you everybody for joining. Welcome to the new cycle of the TSE. I'm again, uh, very honored to be the chair. And um, so I hope you all use the few minutes that have passed to take a look at the antitrust policy notice. We also have the code of conduct, which basically says, don't be a jerk, be a decent person, be polite with each other. So without further ado, I think we can get started. I did put, uh, I didn't have time in the announcement of my uh, position and the uh, and this call, so I still put together an agenda. And so I hope it's enough to get us started. Brian? Yeah, um, hi, and th sorry I couldn't make it last week, um, but now I get to combine both a welcome to the new to it to the new TSC and a welcome to the new TSC chair. Um, and uh, uh, congrats, Arno, on, on having been elected. And I definitely want to thank Dan uh, for uh, very confidently uh, managing the, the community for the last year and helping us navigate through some extremely complicated and weighty issues. Um, and I've, uh, I think, uh, you know, Arno, your participation, you know, especially this last year, I think uh, was really, you know, a, a key to people being very comfortable with you taking this role as well. Um, and, and turnover is good change is good one of the things that was exciting about the new TSC is that you know we have five new voices there um, uh, and uh, you know I, I think that that kind of 50 55 44 percent I guess turnover um, or what yeah, yeah 40 45 percent turnover is is about right you know I, I none of us should feel like uh, this is a job for life or a commitment for life um, uh, and uh, be able to, to, to move on and so um, uh, yeah I think that's pretty healthy um, and as no doubt many of you have seen um, there's some confusion out there uh, in the world about what being on the TSC means being on the TSC does not mean representing um, your company it does not mean representing the project that you're on uh, it means representing yourself <laughs> um, and your take uh, is the right thing for the hyperledger technical community as a whole uh, and I have complete confidence having met and engaged with each one of the TSC members uh, at, at times in the past, some less than others, and those I haven't gotten to know as well, I'd like to get to know better. Um, uh, Angelo, uh, Angelo and Troy, I don't think um, I've engaged enough with you, but I uh, uh, would love to find some time to chat. Um, but I, I, I feel like, uh, you know, as long as both in our commitment and in the actuality of how we, you know, uh, work together as a TSC, we reflect you know ourselves and and our best understanding of how to make open source work i think i don't think any of the um outside concerns about uh how this plays out or have any have any sort of merit um so i with that i just want to say thank you uh to all of you um who not only got elected thank you to all the others on this call who ran as well um <clears throat> and i am also very encouraged by the conversations about um potentially you know increasing the size of the tsc uh and and some interesting approaches to it uh so with that I, i'll hand the mic back to arno thank you brian and of course i second what you said about uh, my predecessors both Chris and uh, Dan, and I feel like they, I have big shoes to fill. But hopefully, I won't disappoint and be able to get us uh, further down the line. So, with that being said, I think Dan, you're the one who set up the maintainer submit. I did look at the list of uh, agenda topics. Uh, there is quite a few that have been proposed. How are we doing? Uh, yeah. So I, I think we're still looking for some more participation. I reached out on some of the different rocket chat channels, uh, some of the projects that I didn't see a lot of names from. Uh, so still hoping to get the participation up for that. But yeah, it's nice to see the list of agenda topics growing. and We can start to uh, schedule those out soon. Very good. But so the registration is low for now? Um, I don't remember numbers off the top of my head. I mean, it wasn't bad, bad, but uh, it was, you know, there, there were pro some projects that weren't well represented. Okay, so I mean, if you need help reaching out to those specific projects, let me know. I'll see what I can do. Thanks. Anything, any questions on this from anybody? 
Yeah, I don't have access to it, but um, Salona, do you have access to the registration sheet that you could give us a sense for how many people are there? Sorry, mute button. Um, I believe, let me, I haven't checked it today, but yesterday I think we had about 22. Um, uh, there was a lot from Sawtooth. There, I think we're, and this is, uh, I don't have it in front of me, um, but uh, there, there were definitely a lot of projects yet who didn't have representation. Um, so there was Sawtooth, there was some Transact, there was Fabric, um, I believe Nathan's coming from Indy um, slash Aries, um, but I don't remember uh, a lot of some of the others having um, representation. So, okay. all right. And and one one thing I'll add is, you know, we we believe it's important to be able to get people there. Um, we know that asking people to travel to, um, uh, it, you know, to the United States to, you know, whether that was Minnesota or New York City or wherever, can be a challenge. Um, if, uh, if there's any maintainer out there, um, especially on a project that isn't well represented yet in the in that group, for whom the travel costs would be a barrier. I mean, we've not created a formal travel program. Uh, assistance program yet, uh, but uh, if informally, uh, it would be helpful to be able to get airfare and, and a few nights of hotel covered um, and, uh, at some reasonable cost. Uh, do get in touch with Salona or myself, and we can talk about it. All right, that's great news. Thanks, Brian. I had two questions, if that's okay. Sure, um, go ahead. One, will there be any specific TSC activity there? I know we'd like the TSC members to, to go. And the second would be, is there anything, you know, can we propose and have working group people there as well? So, no, I'm not planning on there being any TSC subjects there. And um, I think for this maintainer summit, it'd be good to just see how much we can focus around code and projects. Um, and, you know, I, I think that's sort of the, the, the focus of it. Let me also try to add what I find works best when open source communities that, that really try to be inclusive um, do have these kinds of face-to-face -face summits and gathering is to really focus on um, creativity, collaboration, the kind of back and forth around a whiteboard that is hard to do, you know, virtually, um, but avoid things that are decisional, you know, that, that either, you know, unintentionally or, or whatever, um, you know, exclude the people who couldn't make it there, who couldn't be in the room. So uh, it'll, I'm sure, be a great opportunity to figure out things like, well, how might Transact and Fabric work better together? Um, how might the different projects make better use of Indie? You know, that sort of thing. Um, I, as I understand it, there's one or two people coming from Consensus who will be able to talk about Bezu. So working that in uh, is going to be a really uh, in figuring out where those touch points are. I mean, all the, all these kinds of things are about ideation, you know, uh, and and if you can just make sure what you know the results of all that work get brought back to the relevant uh, project lists and Jira tickets and and other kinds of things, um, that'll that would be the best kind of outcome for my take on what what uh, you know um, this meeting could 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 accomplish. Yeah, definitely. The overarching goal is cross-project collaboration. And so it's, you know, maybe there'll be an opportunity for individual projects to, to have some discussion, but it, it should really be cross-project so that that should not imply to anybody the kind of things like, uh, well, here's our release um, objectives for Sawtooth or you know something like that, that would normally take place on the mail-in list or through RFCs. So I'm just taking a really quick look here at the responses. Um, we have 23 people um, have signed up, um, and it's uh, one from consensus. So. All right. I mean, I, you know, I always say for these kind of meetings to be successful, we need to have agenda items. I mean, I was encouraged to see we have quite a few that have been proposed. Obviously, it only works if enough people show up as well, but hopefully we can close that gap in the next few weeks.
All right, so let's move on then. Silona, there's a boot camp coming up. Yes, so uh, the Russian boot camp is moving along. Um, we're going to be doing the big press for uh, the big uh, press for press <laughs> um, next week. So registration is up, all the stuff is up. We just have to get some of the session leaders to get all of their sessions in. Um, but we do have a bunch of session leaders who have already said that they want to do it. They just haven't created their sessions yet and put them on the grid. Um, but I like to have that grid partially filled out before we do the big press push. So they're all working on that this week. And then uh, we'll be doing um, our blog post about it. And they're going to be doing their press releases. And we're also going to be hitting Telegram, Facebook, and some other social media to um, get people to register and sign up. All right, thank you. Any questions for Sila? Okay, hearing none, let's continue then. So just a quick note on the quarterly report template. Uh, I actually made a change yesterday. I mean, Rai really made the change, but on my request. Um, I was reflecting on, you know, with my new hat on how I could try to even streamline further the processes in those calls and focus, you know, to give us more time to focus on maybe what people really expect the technical steering committee to focus on. And, and you know, thinking of the, the quality reports, I, uh, I have to say I have, and, you know, I, I really think that we have improved in having these reports put online beforehand and having people be able to review them and try to basically not have the reporters go through them verbally, but essentially try to focus the discussion on, you know, anything that's worth highlighting. And at the same time, you know, sometimes I think it's not always easy. Uh, maybe in some cases there's some language barrier that makes that uh, more difficult than other times. And so essentially, I decided to make one change to the template, and which is to add a section that explicitly gives the reporter the opportunity to report, to highlight topics or issues, questions they want to raise to the TSC. And so... My expectation is this would, you know, allow us to maybe go even quicker through the reports and, you know, by highlighting what we really need to talk about during the calls, if anything. And, you know, hope there may be cases where you have nothing to say and that's totally fine. But at least I know that there are cases in the current reports, uh, the latest reports that I went through, where there were mentions, oh, we'd like the TSC to review this, the case of the taxonomy, for instance. And so I thought it would be good to have that highlighted in the report with a specific uh, section. So I, I figured this would not be controversial, so I kind of took the liberty to just go ahead and make that change. I hope everybody, you know, uh, finds this suitable. I just have a question seeing the highlight. Uh, is that questions slash issues for the TSC or is that questions for the TSC and other issues that need to be like I, I'm just Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I think <laughs> it's meant to be questions slash issues. So right, okay. you'll be able to change that. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay, anything else? All right, so uh, that's what I was hoping for. They would be not controversial and people would just uh, think that it's a good improvement. So let's move on. Then the next uh, thing that I want to highlight, uh, you know, is again, trying to be a bit more structured on how we address some of the issues that you know are being brought up to the TSC or that the TSC has to or wants to tackle. I figured we could try to use the wiki and we started doing a little bit of that through the task force and as you guys know I you know I took the lead on the task force on life cycle and so I kind of went through some pain in learning how to if you know effectively use the wiki and so I thought I would try to use that uh, experience to the benefit of the TSC. And so I created a new section um, to basically keep track of the topics 
that you know are being how to be discussed or, or you know decided on by the the TSC, and so you will see that in the navigation bar on the left on the wiki, and there are links there at the top of the menu. Um, there is a section called pending topics for the TSC, and basically anybody feels you know feel free to add a page there. All you have to do. This, this list basically is automatically updated with a, with a macro. All you have to do is create a page, which is a child of that page, and it will add it automatically to that list. And then there's another section close, called Close Topics, where we move things there once we are done with them. By the way, it doesn't mean we have made a decision. We may decide not to tackle it, which is why it's called Closed uh, Topics, because there may be different ways of closing them. So you can see that you know we've populated that sections quite a bit already, and I'm happy to see that there's quite a discussion that has already happened. Um, you know, I think we're better off trying. I was debating over the granularity of those. I think we are better off keeping them fairly small, which is why you know there are quite a few there that are related to the size of this TSC, the election, the process, how many, the quorum, and all that. And rather than having one page with all of that, I think we're better off having them, you know, uh, handled individually so that we have more siloed threads that are easier to follow. And so, again, I, I also created a few that are basically placeholders that point to other things like the sub projects refer to the last issue we have related to the life cycle task force. And I created some for the work groups as well. And, um, you know, this is just the beginning of this. I encourage other people to come and add to it as they see fit. But, you know, I'm, um, I hope you find this to be useful. Um, and so there's a link in the agenda at the end uh, called Backlog, which basically is populated with that same macro that shows all the topics that are being currently listed as pending. And um, this will, you know, give us an, a, an oversight uh, on what's going on there. Any comments or questions? So I have a, a comment. Um, I know one of the backlog items at some point was the decision log, and I'm Assuming this is part of that, um, but I, I do know that Confluence has a, I don't know what it's called, plugin, a macro, a something that is basically a mechanism for you to do this sort of thing with a, a log page, right, where all the decisions are captured together and then it has a status about where that decision is. Um, and I wonder, you know, similar to how we have on the wiki with uh, kind of the, the headers for working groups and the headers for projects if we should do something similar to that where we can actually see kind of the status of these backlog items right are they in progress are they uh, completed are they resolved with the decision that sort of thing um, so maybe maybe I'll what I'll do is send a link to the decision log that I used in the past and we can take a look at that and see if it helps this process any. Yes, thank you, Tracy. And I have to tell you, you know, I keep forgetting that one. And uh, every time I remember it when I'm away from my desk, and I, I think, oh, I need to add one item about that. And then when I come back, I forget. So I'm glad you, you're bringing it up. And uh, I think we should create an item about this. So we at least it's on the radar. Uh, I, I, you know, I welcome any kind of suggestion on how to do that better, obviously. So I'm very interested in what you can share there. Yeah, will do. And so one thing I do want to highlight is my expectation is, you know, so the backlog at the bottom of the agenda basically gives us a view of what's there. And, you know, as things progress and mature and are ready for decisions, I will highlight those as part of the discussion section directly as well, right? So. Anybody else, any other suggestions or comments, questions? I 
I hope you guys find this useful. I like it, Arnold. All yeah, right, so it's nice to have this kind of organization. This will be helpful. All right, thanks. Okay, so if there's nothing else, then I think we can move on. I put a, one agenda item really for that was meant to be for discussion. Uh, you know, we have, as it was pointed out, five new members. And I actually don't mean to limit that to the new members. If other people were there before and are still around, you know, have topics they'd like to point out, uh, you know, I'm happy to open the floor to others. But I was interested specifically about the new members. And I thought it could be interesting to hear from them, not the bio, because anybody can go look at their, their nomination statement and see their bios, but more what you know, they would be interested to see being tackled by the TSC moving forward. And, uh, you know, any ideas on what's broken, what we could change, do better, I think is welcome. I know that there are people who've kind of lamented on the fact that we don't focus so much on technical issues and I feel the pain there. You know, I will say that I'm a bit, um, I was a bit surprised, let's say that, you know, we have been left with a framework that's actually fairly weak. And there's a lot of those questions that we are tackling now related to the TSC election and the terms and all this stuff that I would have expected us to have from the get go, especially with the Linux Foundation that has many of those similar projects going on. I thought we would have inherited a template, uh, you know, of bylaws with a lot more details than we have. And because we don't, we unfortunately end up having to deal with a lot of this that we have to define for ourselves. I am all in favor of trying to, you know, limit this to the minimum, try to be as expedient as possible so that it doesn't take all our time because I don't think anybody really want to run for the TSC to talk about the number of seats we should have on TSC. But, you know, this is just something we have to do because, you know, that's just the way it is. So with that being said, you know, I don't want to take up all the time. So let's try, let's try to get through the list. Angelo. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, so let me tell you that um, unfortunately I'm sick, but I wanted to join this meeting because it's my first uh, TSC meeting. So I'm, I'm I'm very happy to be part of this uh, th this group in, in driving and shaping uh, Hyperledger. So um, let me say just a few quick, quick a few words quickly. I, unfortunately, I don't have many energies. I'm, I'm very sorry for that, but. Uh, um, I'm a, as you can check from my short bio, I'm a very technical guy, I'm a cryptographer and, uh, uh, and I think blockchain technologies exist because crypto exists, so my stress will be on, on, on these topics, so to put more and more crypto at the center, uh, to have more and more uh, advanced technologies in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Hyperledger to improve the interoperability between the, uh, the, the different platforms. Um, so that, that's for me the goal for, uh, for, uh, for uh, um, as a member of the T, uh, uh, as a member of TESC. Um, and with that, please don't, don't, don't let me uh, say more words because I'm, I'm very, <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for, uh, for all the people who uh, also voted for me. I really appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Angelo. Thank you, especially to show up, uh, for showing up, even though you don't feel good. So thanks. And very, you're very welcome. So I don't think Gary has shown up, has he? Gary is not on the call. Okay. All right, Sueda, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, so excited to be here. Um, in terms of things that I was excited or what I want to kind of tackle as part of the TSC now, um, I think the last couple of years on Hyperledger, I've done... I've been always interested to see how some of these projects can work together. What are the things that come out of that? And from a TSC standpoint, seeing how to enable that and make those kind of getting those technical discussions started. How do we make sure they, you know, they go move forward, make progress. Those are the things I'm interested in um, and seeing how from here, this standpoint, how we make that kind of more inclusive and, um, 
basically more possible because I feel like we do have a lot of projects, but that cross project po collaboration doesn't always work and it is a difficult thing. So trying to see how that can go forward and become easier. Um, yeah. All right, thank you. And I think that you can definitely help us there because you, uh, of all people, have actually been working in that space with the chain code, the uh, EVM for fabric. So with collaboration with Burrow. So thank you. Yeah. This is very good. Thank you. Tracy? Yeah, I'll plus one, uh, what Swetha said. I think that definitely, you know, that cross project collaboration is going to make us stronger. Right, we're going to end up with uh, projects that will will meet the needs of, of many, right? Instead of the needs needs of potentially fewer, right? Uh, for me, I, I really want to focus in on how do we make the the community itself stronger, right? Making sure that it's easy for new people to get involved and stay involved. Um, you know, I think the whole diversity, civility, inclusion working group that's been formed is is. is is extremely important and and something that you know we as the TSC need to to nurture and make sure that it it exists i think you know that's part of making sure that it's uh, that people will want to stay right when they feel like they're part of a community that is welcoming to them and and that they want to participate in is is something that's important um some of the other things that i've i've heard kind of come up recently i think is is around the working groups and, and what specifically um, they need to accomplish, right? And so I think being potentially a bit more directive from the TSC uh, to the working groups instead of letting the working groups uh, focus, I think is important, right? I think if I look at the working group history, they were, they were formed uh, with a certain thing in mind and maybe that thing is no longer relevant because they've accomplished that goal. So. Uh, what what can they be accomplishing or working on now uh, to make sure that they're uh, they're successful in what they're doing and um, yeah so I think those are kind of top of mind at the moment and uh, again thank you for um, for voting for me I I'm really looking forward to you know, making the community stronger and, and working with everyone to do that. All right, thank you, Tracy. Again, you're welcome. Troy. <laughs> Thanks, Arno. Um, first of all, I'm quite excited to, um, to be joining these meetings. And it's really quite a privilege for me to be here. So thank you to everybody. Um, of course, I'd like to echo what um, the others have already said. Um, in particular, I think um, focusing more on, on te technical topics of is of course of interest to me and especially um, looking at how do we do better interop between uh, applications that have a DLT backing. Um, that was one of the reasons I was quite excited about um, uh, the area project um, where that's um, effectively one of the explicit goals of that project and I'd really like to see uh, more of that going forward. All right, thank you. Okay, so let me turn to the to the the to the existing. Or, I mean, we're all on now, but uh, to the previous uh, members, you know, who were there before, and and maybe anybody else who wants to bring up any issues they think we should focus on moving forward that maybe has not been focused on so much. Silence. Okay, so we're doing great. We're doing everything we should be doing is what that means, right? Hey, <clears throat> hey Arno, this is uh, Dave Hughesby. The, um, there are a number of little issues that um, are about governance that we should probably bring up with the TSC. I was planning on getting you guys, you know, letting you get settled before hitting with this, but there are things around like authorship and copyright uh, when we publish software to third party um, distribution platforms like crates.io, npm, that kind of stuff. Like a lot of little, you know, niggling details that I'd like to have the TSC weigh in on because we've had some disagreements amongst the projects and it always comes back to where's the policy. And a lot of times we don't have the policy. So we've been, um, Ryan and I have been collecting a lot of these little things and um, I think you can expect us uh, to send you guys, send the TSC mailing list 
um, a series of questions we'd like the, the TSC to address and to come up with a rough policy. Well, no, not a rough policy, a specific policy so that it can be enforced. All right, thank you, yeah, that, that sounds good. May I suggest you create uh, topics under the pending uh, topics for consideration by TSC for those? Yep, will do. Thank you. And by the way, I mean, you know, there is always contention about how much we should work offline versus on the calls and stuff. Just so you know, my philosophy is that we should work offline as much as possible, but in my experience, calls are a good way to force closure on some of the discussion that otherwise purely offline tend, you know, are hard to reach. And, and I'm not saying it's impossible. There are clearly uh, communities that work entirely offline, but I think, you know, the, we can be more efficient in, in closing issues with calls every now and then, like we have now every weekly, to close some of the topics that are happening offline. But I certainly encourage people to, you know, entertain discussions offline as much as possible between the calls. Whether it's on the mailing list or the wiki, I don't have a strong preference. So. Uh, so. So, Arno, I was trying to find my mute button. Um, okay. Unfortunately, I found it. So, um, I was about to say, you know, I, I'm hoping that this round we can spend more time with technical steering and, you know, deciding the direction we want to go. I think Hyperledger has grown a lot um, and the industry has changed a lot since Hyperledger was formed. And, you know, we've danced around the convergence and what does that mean? And I don't think anyone thinks that it means we'll have a single DLT, but, um, you know, where, where do we want to go as a group? Um, do we want the Apache model of, you know, as many projects as we can? Do we want, um, you know, something that is more, you know, a lot of cross-project collaboration, which I think is the way we're going, but would be good to have some discussions on that um, you know from a technical <clears throat> technical point of view where do we want to be in a year um, <clears throat> you know things like that and, and then we can figure out how to stay the course to get there because we are a technical steering committee so <clears throat> you know let's figure out where we want to go and how we want to get there yeah no well, I understand this is an interesting topic for sure and an important one I think it's a tough one but you know, uh, I, I I appreciate. It. Thank you. Yeah, I'm hearing a lot of people say um, this this interest in doing more technical steering, and it feels like a lot of times our discussions gravitate toward the, towards the gravitate towards the things that are immediately in front of us as the steering committee, which tend to be more procedural, and so maybe that's something that we can be conscious of. Uh, as we start to look at these these governance and election questions and stuff like that, maybe if we sort of uh, cap the amount of time that we're willing to spend on each of these in order to give more time to the technical matters, we might really benefit our long-term interests more than some of these things that are in front of us today. Yeah, this is an interesting thought. And it's a, it's a hard, hard balance to find, right? And because we've discussed this, you know, there are issues about how much steering can we actually do given the independent projects and the fact that they all kind of follow their own course. And, you know, I think I've never heard anybody say we shouldn't encourage convergence into, you know, cross-pollination, integration, all this good stuff. And yet, at the end of the day, we can't force anybody <laughs> to do it. And so, we, you know, there is only so much, you know, we can do. So, I think we have to create an environment that definitely favors these integrations and cross projects, but uh, initiatives. But, uh, yeah. So, I'm, I'm happy to, you know, get the TSC to work, to try harder to, to get there for sure. Uh, Chris is on. Welcome. So, um, anybody else we haven't heard of or from? 
No. All right. So we let's uh, let's uh, move on then. Uh, we had the quarterly reports. I have a couple of things to highlight. So the, the smart contracts working group sent a report. I am not sure why it's labeled Q2, given the date at which it was created. Is Sophia on by any chance? I saw a few of us actually did review it and some asked questions and I haven't seen any response. So maybe they are not here and they are not in position to respond, but I don't think there is any major issues, but there were some questions that would be interesting to get answers to. Okay, so if there's nobody from that group, I guess we'll have to leave it alone for now. We can try to get back to it next week. The other one is the Learning Material Development Working Group. Uh, Bobby. Hello, how are you? Yes, hi. So you may have heard what I said earlier about, you know, highlighting issues or questions for the TSC. I know you have some. Um, yes, if you want to go to the report, if that's possible. Yeah, we're looking at it now. Okay. Um, first, um, I just wanted to thank everybody um, and congratulate the uh, winners for the TSC. Um, it was a privilege to be considered in the group, um, especially someone who is not a coder. So I do appreciate that the consideration, it was quite an honor. And congratulations, looking forward to the leadership. Um, again, the Learning Materials Working Group is uh, goals are just trying to support the learning needs of the community um, and we're trying to do that um, by setting up a library for uh, one-stop information so we you know redesigned our wiki page um, to have information on how to get involved how to get a linux login how to join the calls how to edit pages again all learning information to onboard to help and then the next big thing is the resource library and that resource library we would like to house all the documentation that's been created in the community. Um, and basically how we want to do that um, is by a, so I'm jumping down a little bit on the working group health report, but is by a survey. Um, and I know that the TSC previously had mentioned wanting to survey the community, especially the project maintainers just to get information on contact people and how to get in touch and who to get in touch with when um, needing information from the projects, working groups and special interest groups. So the, the learning materials group also needs a survey to go out to find out what documentation everybody's already created so that we can store it in this library. So we were going to take on the task of if, again, with the permission of the TSC and with your guidance, um, doing a community survey getting the questions answered that all the groups, you know, it could be a group, everybody can get questions in the survey that they need answered to make each one of these community groups more efficient. So we wanted to work on that this quarter, um, getting that done so that that resource library can be a real source for the community to go to for education and learning materials. Again, right now on the homepage, there's the new uh, over general the general presentation that um, everyone can give discussing the Hyperledger greenhouse as it stands this quarter and that's updated quarterly um, so you can always find that presentation on our homepage uh, updated we'd like that to be basically where all the documentation can be found um, for all the community to look at that's about it if anybody has any questions So the, um, the DCI work group is also interested in putting together a survey for uh, substantially different reasons. Uh, and one of the sensitivities that they've been exploring is how not to over survey the community. <laughs> so if we had, you know, a, a couple different surveys going out, we're going to get fewer and fewer responses. So it might be good to uh, coordinate with them if it's likely to hit the same people. Absolutely. I was hoping, you know, to do get all the questions from the community that they need answered and do just one survey. And we set up on our wiki page a way to manage that already. Um, so like we, we put the different groups and when we'd send the survey out and when it came back. So 
and the wiki page is already set up to handle a survey of that size. Um, we just need the support of the community to gather the questions everybody needs answered. And then the only other thing I didn't really touch on is the best practice documentation. And we're trying to, we're working with Salona to try to develop standards for uh, white papers, uh, use cases. We have the graphic library um, getting set up. Um, so that should help people when they need to develop uh, learning materials to be able to find the right logos and the right um, style sheets. Um, so that's there too. And we're working on a community key term glossary so that when you're creating uh, documentation, you can look at and decide what um, definition um, the community has for these terms that are constantly changing. And again, once we compile the key terminology section or the glossary, we want it approved, the definitions approved by the TSC or by somebody uh, before we say it's ready. Um, so that's basically what our group has been working on. Again, membership, we, we, we got a few new members, we need new leadership, we need new um, people to join the group so that we're you know, really working on our onboarding and getting people to get involved. All right, so thank you. I mean, for the, for the terminology, I, you know, I expect you at some point you're going to flag it and say, hey, now we think we're done, can you please uh, review it? Um, and, and then we can all have a look at that. For, for the, the survey, you're saying you would like to get questions from the TSE. I, you know, yes, I, the, anyone who needs uh, questions answered in a survey to send us the questions and then we would just send out one community survey. Yes, so we heard from Dan, there's the DCI working group also doing something similar. Do we have anybody else who knows of any of those, uh, you know, needs or anybody who has some questions they would like? I'm trying to get, you know, just to understand where I'm trying to get to is, you know, if we just say TSC in general, it's like everybody and nobody. So, you know, my fear is nobody answers, nobody says anything and you're left wondering, did they, did they not hear me or does this mean they have nothing? So I, I want to be more precise about the question and, you know, hear an active no rather than uh, not knowing whether you're just being ignored. <laughs> <laughs> well again we'll take um the survey page up on our um wiki site anyone can edit and add questions and that's right where we are at now is each project uh or the projects the working groups and the special interest groups each have a section so if anybody has any questions for those um communities they can go to that page and add the questions because right now we're just compiling questions for the surveys Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Obviously, you don't want to have too many questions either. You know, back to what Dan was saying, I agree that having too many surveys is not going to be good, but having surveys that are too long is not good either. You know, yeah. I think currently, I'll, I'll t get, share with you some, some, you know, some experience. Currently, IBM HR has some series, uh, a whole series of, uh, of polling questions. They send one question every week. It takes two minutes to answer. And I think they have great response because it's very simple to answer them. So I think there is, a, you know, you have to find the right way to go at this. Agreed. So I, I would just add, right, that I think it's important that we understand the goals of surveys, right? What are we trying to get out of it? What sort of information? Um, I think that was really helpful when the DCI working group came up with goals for what it is we wanted to get out of this survey to help us focus our questions. Um, so do we have goals for, for the survey? Is that listed on the wiki pages as well? Um, for, um, I can add the goals. I know the goals that I heard um, in prior TSC conversations where they would like contact people um, so they know to whom when they need to contact the different projects or groups, um, who that would be. Um, and for the learning materials, we, again, just want to collect the documentation um, that's already been created. So the discussion that we'd had, to my recollection, in, in the past on that was that staff was looking for a consolidated list of points of contact. And some of the feedback from the projects was uh, just hit the mail list. Um, 
uh, ends up being difficult to have uh, sort of subsets of maintainers that get pinged for things that doesn't that can lead to some divisiveness in the communities. So that was my recollection of how we resolved that was that we we weren't going to create special contact lists. Yeah, and I guess then similar to that, right? Use that mailing list to request documentation. Request documentation, correct. And you might also think for that resource library, instead of trying to consolidate all of the documentation and maintain links that might change, if there's a way that you can provide instead some guidance for consistency amongst the projects. So if you just go to the wiki page for the project, you can consistently find the documentation. That way it should just be, if people are looking for documentation on a project, they go to the project instead of uh, winding their way into a library and then back out to the project. Um, again, this library also is for more people who are trying to just get involved in the community and don't really know what they're looking for so they can see the projects and see the documentation that's available for each one. You know, instead of having to go to each individual wiki page to search out for the documentation. Okay. That was kind of the idea. I'm not sure if that's a good idea, but that was the idea. All right. Anything else on this? Anybody? There's clearly a lot of work going on, so I appreciate all the effort that you're putting into that. Um, one thing for me, actually, we've just put up a GitHub IO um, page for Burrow um, using like a, a dynamic page generator thing. Would it be better for that to be hosted on the main uh, project page on Hyperledger, which is a little sparse at the moment? Um, currently, we're just linking to this, this, this doc site. Um, on GitHub pages, but um, I'm not sure what the most consistent thing to do would be. That's the one. That would be the link that we would put in the resource library. So there'd be a link to all the GitHub repositories for each one of the projects. Uh, yeah, this, is, um, this isn't the GitHub repository. This is uh, GitHub pages being used for hosting. Yeah, yeah, but Bobby is referring to this this effort they are starting is to try to collect all the pointers to the different documentations of the different projects and information about the projects. So that, that would fall into that. But, you know, back to, to your question, though, I mean, I, I think and I, you know, I was in the marketing meeting yesterday uh, on the marketing call and there, there were questions about the websites and I think there's still work that needs to be done from a hyperledger point of view in terms of how we organize all the different pages, different projects. And, uh, you know, there are still a couple of projects that have top level domains that are a bit at odd with everything, how everything else is done. And so I think there is a bit of, cleanup effort going on hopefully things will settle down and you know i i think if gary was here he would say something about the fact that it also touches on the fact that there isn't a one way we do projects within hyperledger and, and maybe it's detrimental to the project overall and something the tsc could try to 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 improve is giving some guidance and maybe you know how how strongly we want to word that, I don't know, but you know, and if whether we enforce that or not is, you know, is there a template model on how you're supposed to run a project, where your documentation is, how you do your CI, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, it's clear that there is a lot of diversity today on that front for better and for worse. So that is a project that uh, David Hughesby and I are working on right now. To the answers to those, what are the potential answers to those questions? Uh, so it is top of mind for the community architect team. Um, 
one of the you know side effects of this part of this comes out of the CICD um, task force that we had for a while, and uh, and part of this is driven by uh, the Fabric family of projects moving out of Garrett and Jenkins into uh, GitHub and question marks. So you know we're kind of trying to take advantage of the of this uh, flux to hopefully in the next few weeks be able to come back with some answers or some options as to like where should the docs go, where should this, that, and the other. So we're working on some of the mechanical stuff. Hopefully we will have something to tell you about that in a little while. All right, that's great, thank you. Okay, so back to the reports, I do want to point out, I didn't see a report from Ursa which I think is due. And for that matter, I haven't seen the Q2 report from Ursa either, which I would expect. But uh, I was wondering if anybody is on the hook there to actually produce a report sooner rather than later. I'm on the hook and I'll get it next week. All right, excellent. Thank you all. Okay, so that's the end of the formal agenda. I don't know if there's anything else anybody wants to bring up. Mick, if I can put you on the, uh, on the spot, how are we doing on the working group task force? Are you on mute? You're on mute. Maybe. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I think uh, we've got a couple of the proposals written up. Um, the first one seems to be kind of, at this point, universally accepted. Um, but Hart and I need to sit down and figure out what's, what's the next round. Okay, but so are you planning to bring something to the TSE soon? Um... I don't know what soon means, but possibly. I'm just trying to get a sense of, I, you know, I, I, I was hoping you'd be able to do a bit like we did for the task force, for the life cycle task force, where we did, we tried to break it down to some smaller issues and we were able to bring those up to the TSC and make progress that way. More yeah, and I think we do, but I think there's a, the, the problem is, is that this is spaghetti. Um, the sort of interdependencies are, are pretty substantial. So um, having some sense of what, how all the pieces fit together. I mean, the, the short of it is, um, I, I think where the consensus is for those who have made the comments back is that um, working groups should go away. We should have task forces and SIGs and leave it at that. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's good enough. And since I put Mick on the spot, I should uh, <laughs> follow my own thought regarding the sub projects issue related to the life cycle task force. That's the last issue, but it's admit you know admittedly I think it's the the hardest one to tackle, and I have not made progress. As you can imagine, life has taken uh, some direction that has kept me busy. And um, so I just didn't have any chance to focus on that. Hopefully, I will sooner rather than later. Regarding the backlog, as I mentioned earlier, we have a whole bunch of issues that have been raised there. And I have been, I'm happy to see that there's this ongoing discussions on several of those items. I just want to encourage people to keep discussing this. Hopefully we'll get a sense that, you know, the discussion kind of converges enough at some point that we can bring this to the TSC. Again, following the same principle of trying to take those piece meal, right, uh, one at a time and, and make progress that way. So unless there's anybody else who has anything else, I'm happy to close with a few minutes to spare. I don't know. Sorry, this is Angelo. Maybe I, I just to just to check because maybe I missed it. So we are not gonna vote uh, today for the expansion of the, the the program committee size. The sorry, the technical committee size. That's correct because there are discussions. So this refers to the the backlog that's in front of yeah. you right now for everybody called TSC size, because 
I think, you know, and Chris brought that up to be clear before the election and the election results, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't want people to get the idea that this is in reaction to the results that, you know, some might find unpleasant or correct, <laughs> not to their liking. But, uh, but there are discussions about how we should extend it, right? Mm -hmm. And in particular, do we just do a numerical extension and take the next people on the list, like I had suggested, or do we try to be more subtle to ensure that we have greater diversity by handpicking some people? Or there are different possibilities. And so at this point, I don't feel like there is a clear you know, consensus on a specific proposal that makes sense to bring to the TSC for final vote. So I just want to encourage people to participate in the discussion and then hopefully we can converge fairly quickly so that maybe next week or the following one or so, we can agree on something. But Perfect, thanks a lot. Yeah, and, and to be clear, anyone can participate in these calls and the, and the online discussions. You, do not have to be a TSC member. Yeah, that's a good point, you know, and I will add that to what I just said before, but the results, you know, people get hang up on the result and whether there is enough diversity and all. I, I don't know what it's like not to be a member because I've been a member officially since the first election, but, you know, I think we've been quite inclusive and I've never heard anybody being shut off. And so at the end of the day, the votes, if you look at the history of the TSC votes, for better or for worse, they are quite similar in nature. It's like, for the most part, unanimous consent. And I don't know that they make much of a difference per se, as much as the discussion that goes on, in which, as Mark says, you know, anybody can participate in. So, all right. So thank you all for participating. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Meetings at